We're going to go over some of the basics in the embroidery today and answer some of the questions that I get asked a lot. These are considered categories. And when you open a category, then you have files. And you can scroll over to see what your files are and the de designs that are in them. What we're going to do today is I'm going to hit return and I go back to my main one and I'm going to get a Disney character. I'm going to take little Minnie Mouse and say set. Okay. Now I'm on my edit screen. If you look across the top you have a zoom, you have a hand that helps you pan around the screen where you want to be. You're showing your hoop sizes, so actually she would fit in all those hoops. It's telling me her size. Then we have a camera, and this camera is what will take a picture of your fabric. And this is a preview camera. And in preview, you can come in and you can zoom in, and you're seeing actual stitches. Down here, it's going to show me where that design would sit in each of the different hoops. So I could actually use my 4x4 four four hoop. If I want to watch it stitch out, I can click here, and to make it go a little faster, I can select that one, and now it's going to draw it out. I should have done two. Let's go real fast. She's done. Close that screen. All right. When I open up my Edit tab, I have Size, Move, Group, Rotate, Mirror, Copy, Border Function, Density, Applique, Thread Palette, Text, Alignment, and Stippling. Let's go to Stippling. On Stippling, it will automatically put the stippling in the appropriate hoop size that you've selected. So if you only want to use your 8x12 hoop, you would select it here. It's going to put the stippling to fit that hoop. Next you have distance. And that's going to bring the stippling away, like correct, make it a margin around her. And you'll see that it's moved over. Spacing has to do with the stippling size. You can go bigger, you can go smaller. If you decide you want to do echo instead of stipple, just touch the echo tab. Whatever changes you made in the stippling on distance and spacing, they will be reflected in the echo also. I'm going to come back up and I'm going to hit the stipple one again. And I'm going to go cancel. So what if I wanted a different fill stitch around here? Something a little cuter, more interesting? I'm going to touch this flower right next to the stippling icon. It's the last one on the right hand side. It just looks like an outline. Once I click on that, again it's going to ask me do I want to put a margin around her. I'm just going to say memory. And now it's telling me I, that they put it in recall my design center stamp pattern list. So we're going to say OK. Now we have to go add. Go to my design center. They told us they stored it in this. So we're going to go there. We click on that one. And across the top, you'll see that same little flower. Click on that little flower. And then there's your, your design. I'm going to click on the first mini. That's the one I put in today. Now I'm on my design center screen. And I want to change my background fill. I don't want plain stippling. I always select the bucket first so I don't forget to use it. Otherwise, you'll just get little tabs of color. The paintbrush just makes spots. This is your selection icon. And so I'm going to look. Here's a regular fill stitch, another stippling. But when I click on the last one, it opens up all these patterns that I could use. Uh, there's 30 patterns on here. So it's all the patterns I could use. I like to pick up something that you can see that I've made changes on. And I usually come up to the bricks. I'm going to take the bricks and say OK. It's already selected a red color, so we'll be able to see it. So I'm going to say OK. With that bucket on, I can just click right here, and it puts the whole design where I put it. Down here, I can do an undo, just to show you the difference. If I forget the bucket, I get a spot. 
So I'm going to undo and redo. That didn't work. Undo. I'm going to come back, get the bucket again, and it's already set on my pattern. So I'm just going to click and set it. Now I'm going to say next. And on the next screen, it's showing my pattern and what we're working with right now. The next one is size. Do I want to change the size of those bricks? I can make them bigger or I can make them smaller and do them appropriate to the size of your design. Say OK. The next one is direction. I'm going to put in direction so you can see the changes and say OK. This is an outline. And what it's going to do, it's going to do like a triple stitch around the edges. If you're going to use this in a quilt block, I recommend you turn that off because you might not be able to get that triple stitch line or bean stitch caught in your seam in your quilt. So you can turn it off. This one is to distort and have fun things with it. You can do a random shift. Yeah, it looks like a wave, wavy walkway. And down here, you can offset positions too. So we can come here and go here and just play how you want and get a whole different look. See, and some of them are just bigger, smaller, and they're creased. If you put it in memory here, it is going to save it in Design Center and the Embroidery Pocket all at once. But I'm going to touch Set because we want to go use this right now. And there's our Minnie Mouse with the new fill on the back. Let's, I'm going to undo the stippling in the background. So I have Minnie Mouse on here and we saw how we could do stippling with her. But what if we have two designs on the screen? I'm going to make a couple of copies of Minnie. And I'll make one more. Okay. So now we have three Minnies on there. Still, if I go to stippling, it's only going to stipple around one design because that's all that was selected and was in the red box. So I'm going to come down here to my selection icons, tell it select them all. Once I tell them to select it all, I have to come up here and group them. Now they're all in one, one grouping. I'm going to come back to stippling and now they're all stippled and say OK. If what, this would be the arrangement I want, I could go back to Design Center and put a different fill around all three at once, too. Okay, while I have them, I'm going to unselect right there. But these are selected still in the red boxes now, you see? I'm going to come over to my alignment tool that's right next to the T, and I'm going to tell it, align them center for me. And it automatically aligns them all center. You can go through center, bottom, right justify, left justify, anything you want. This is a new icon. So now while we have all those three set, I am going to go and do an undo. I'm going to delete one or two of Oh, I have to ungroup it completely. Select just one and we'll delete. Okay. All right. Just stop there for now. Is that long enough or not? Yep. Yeah, I'm talking and then my mind.